Hi everybody, I'm Michael. This is our video version of the Breakout Box Learning Lunch. Actually, it's not the Breakout Box, it's the Digital Breakout Games. Uh, five years ago, January 2016, we talked about the Breakout Boxes, and since then we have done a lot of Breakout Games that we have written uh, here in the library. Kids love it because they're engaged, there's a clock running, and there's a sense of competition. Even kids who frequently are kind of tuned out in class, we find that they're really engaged with these breakout games. And we've had a lot of success with that in the library, but the pandemic, of course, uh, caused all of that to go out the window, right? Um, you know, we, we couldn't have the physical boxes. We didn't want to have the kids in that close proximity. We needed to wipe everything down. So we didn't really play that many. Great news though. Uh, this new digital breakout platform allows us to play a lot of those same games in a similar style online. And you can still do that in the classroom, but just on Chromebooks. And so that's what we're going to talk about. By the way, if you do want to play some of the original games, now that we're kind of coming out of the pandemic next year, you can see where those are at. So on the library webpage, if you go to Tech Playground, if you scroll down just a little bit here, breakout boxes, our notes from January 2016, click that link and it will show you all the games that the librarians in the district have created. Uh, the ones that we have created here at North are right here. Uh, you can see English language arts, history, of course, no surprise, our biggest customers. And then it'll say whether that's a physical box that we play here in the library or in your classroom or digital. So we don't have a lot of the digital ones listed yet. So let's talk about that because that's why we're here to focus on. So first off, breakoutedu.com. All of our staff members have, uh, should have, had emailed a password to you. If you can't find that and you haven't logged in yet, send me an email, michael.russell at lsr7.net, and I can resend that to you. Uh, easy login once you get set up. Google. And you're in. A lot of possibilities here. So notice right off the bat, they've got 12 different categories. You could either click through these and see specifically something there. What I like to do though is say, I want something digital and I'm gonna filter that. And I only want 8th, 9th, 10th, adult, 11th, 12th. And then over here on the right side, you can see all the various categories, math, science, the arts, social studies, library. Uh, team development, holiday and seasonal language, including modern language, as well as English, physical education, CTE, uh, computer science. Uh, for this example, I'm going to click holiday and seasonal and just team development. Click go, and it's going to then say, here's all those games. And so right off the bat, you see in the left corner of each of these, it says it's digital. It gives you a little bit about each one. So let's say Attack of the Locks. It's a digital game. There's the name designed by Breakout. Some of these are, are submitted by users. Upper elementary, middle grades, high school. If you click this, it will give you a little bit more information. What you've already seen, copy and assign. I'm gonna circle back to here in a couple minutes. Right away, you can see the story. Obviously, it's a Star Wars kind of game. As a teacher, you see this. The students won't see this. You can see the lock combination. So as the teacher, if you're playing this in class, you can really easily find out what the solutions are supposed to be, as well as how you get to those uh, reasons. Why is the number lock the answer that it is? It also gives you a chance to play the game just as a preview. So let's click that. So this game, uh, allows you to play in any order. So obviously there's one, two, three, four, five locks. When you click on that, students will uh, see there's a video link and enter their combinations. Now, let's say that game is close to something that you want for your classroom, but not exact. It's not perfect. You can make a copy of it. That kind of takes it from the Breakout EDU platform into your own digital realm, and you can edit it to exactly what you want to use. So let's say I've done that. I'm going to go to my account, my digital games. There's a different game that I uh, brought in earlier. It's called Knowledge Nights, but see here you can see it says copy, and I can edit. And now I can go in, 
with that game, I could change the, the front screen. I could change anything about the locks. I could put in a different picture for this particular clue. I could change the answer. Uh, so really, they are completely editable uh, for whatever purpose that you have. Also, you can create something from scratch. So my account, I'm going to say create new games. You can do a single lock. If you're just looking for a real quick hit on a specific concept, you can do a non-sequential game. I prefer writing these because if a kid gets stuck on one lock, they can go out, work on another lock, let that first clue kind of simmer, uh, and maybe come back to it. Sequential game, of course, you do one lock to get to another lock to get to another lock. So let's take a look at this digital game that I created and how to edit it, how to get it out there to students. So created this from scratch, put in some locks, and it looks very different as you build this compared to what students see. So I wrote all of the clues in a Google Doc and then pasted it in because I didn't trust that my work would be saved. I added a picture. And then I set my combination. So Broncos is the answer. It's what's the web passport. And then put in a couple of other clues. So let's go out and play this game so you can see the difference in how it looks on the teacher building side and what the students see. So here's the first welcome screen. And notice that the clock is already ticking. As soon as we enter this game, I had it set for 45 minutes, it starts going. So here's our first clue, that first puzzle. Uh, looks very different. Obviously, the Bronco head is much smaller. Um, this fills a lot more space. It didn't feel like it was that many words, but when you compress it into this box, and that's not really editable, uh, which is a little frustration. So the answer, Broncos, we put in, and notice as soon as I hit the last one, it'll say, hey, you got it. And this box here will kind of check off and be green. There it is, and it immediately prompts us to the next puzzle, uh, which is, oops, uh, Shakespeare, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Mahatma Gandhi. And again, same thing. It checks off and says, hey, congratulations. So it does look a little bit different. You can play this throughout uh, as you build your game. The next question is, how do you get it to students for them to play, whether that is a game that is already out there on Breakout EDU, something that you have built yourself, maybe something that students have built, uh, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. How you deliver it to students really depends on what you want to do with it. What information do you need back? Is it something that they're just doing to kind of um, fill in for concepts, something that they're doing as a bonus? They've already finished their work. Uh, you want them to have a little bit of fun in a content area. Then it's really easy to just send out the link. And to do that, you just, uh, let's say here, we're going to click play and notice there is a, a game URL. You copy that, you put that into Schoology, and you're good to go. The students can play it. But if you need feedback, if you need to know that students have played the game for points or just for clarification that they actually did it, uh, you need to do something a little bit different. And so what that is, we're going to go back to My Digital Games and over here on the left side, My Classes. You're going to create a class. Notice I've got LSN staff, library assistants. Now you could drill down and say English 9 first hour, English 9 second hour, or you could lump them all in together. I'm going to, and you're going to in a minute, uh, play a game as a student, so you see what it's like for the students to sign up with this code, and we'll kind of come back to that, but we're going to create this class. So with the class set, we're going to go back, because the game is also set, to My Digital Games, and we're going to assign, this is the game we're all going to play here in a second, LMC Learning Lunch, May 12th, 2021. I'm going to assign that game to the LSN staff. I click Assign, and it's out there. Now, how do you know who's done what? We'll show you momentarily how to get students enrolled in your class to play that game. As they start playing, though, you can click Results, and it will show you who has finished, how long it took them, what percentage of the game they got through. And look at that. Michael R. completed 100% of the game in 42 seconds. Either it's a really easy game, or that's one sharp cookie. Next, let's look at how students log in. So I'm going to go up and log out, 
and you will get instructions on how to log in to play this as a student. Okay, so now let's pretend that we are students coming in to sign up for this uh, and play a game that you have created or just something that you have assigned. So we're going to click sign up. We are a student. We don't do Google Classroom anymore, so we're going to sign up with Breakout EDU. It asks, do we have a class code? Yes, I have assigned all of the students this code. This is for the LSN staff. I'm going to say next. What's your name? And then it pops up. So now I am in the class, LSN staff. I can create a game. We'll come back to that in a minute. Or I can play the game's library, and there is the game that we want to play. And here it is. So you will play this momentarily. So now back in the teacher account, I'm going to go back to my digital games. I can look at that particular one and see results. And there you see I signed up. The first time I completed it in 42 seconds, the second time I bailed. I have 0% complete and it wasn't timed. So I get a little bit of information there. One other thing while we're here uh, in My Digital Games, again, my account, My Digital Games, over here on the left, Student Design Course. Your students can create games. You can put this on them. Uh, as a fun assignment to show what they have learned. They could create a game that other kids next year or even this year could play. And what this does is it walks them through what is Breakout EDU? What do the locks look like? How do you come up with a story? How do you build one of these games? So that in a nutshell is Breakout EDU, the digital platform. As always, let us know how we can help you. If you want us to design a game for you, we would love to do that. Give us a, you know, a few weeks of lead time um, and we can put something together or we can help uh, in any way. This is something that we are testing out. So we have this until January of 2023. So all of next year, we will have this. We will look at statistics, see who's playing it, who's not, uh, you know, whether it's worth keeping or not. It's not cheap. But we think it is something that kids will like. Uh, it is beneficial, I think, to student learning. And if that holds up uh, with some statistics, then we will keep this around for a while. Thanks for tuning in. Play the game. Uh, if you're looking at this on May 12th, and then go get yourself some tacos at the taco truck that is going to be here from 1045 to 1230 out on the west side. Thanks. Bye.